In our next section, we're going to talk about some miscellaneous advanced features for FabricPath, uh, including uh, beyond the multiple topology routing, we'll look at authentication. Uh, we'll look at how we can uh, modify the multi-destination tree election, which is going to affect the broadcast unknown and multicast forwarding. Uh, we'll also look at how we can take one of the nodes out of service for a maintenance window by using the ISIS overload bit. Uh, and then we'll also talk about uh, bidirectional forwarding detection and the operation administration and maintenance uh, for failure detection and then also for troubleshooting of the, uh, the links in the fabric path uh, spine and leaf topology. So the first of these we're going to look at something that we had mentioned uh, briefly a couple times before, which is the fabric path multi-destination tree or the MDT. What this is going to be used for is for forwarding the unknown uh, the broadcast unknown and multicast traffic, or again, what we call the bum traffic. Okay, so simplest way to think about this is, is going to be based on like ARP traffic. So with the previous examples, we were looking at normal unicast layer two routing, where we look at where is the traffic coming from, where is it going to, so what's the source MAC, what's the destination MAC. Based on that, we encapsulate the frame with a source fabric path switch identifier. We look at where the destination is learned based on the destination switch ID. We encapsulate that into the destination of the frame, and then we can unicast forward the traffic uh, out towards these spines. So from an implementation point of view, what we saw here, if we take back a look back at our physical topology, is that we had the four nodes in the fabric, which were switch IDs 51 and 52 for the leafs, switch IDs 71 and 72 for the spines. And then when we looked at the MAC address table, for example, on 5K1, if we show MAC address table for VLAN 10, we see that we're learning this destination, this 8075. We're learning it via switch ID number 52. So if we have a frame come in, our physical classical Ethernet port E11, and it's going from this host 0011 going to the 0075, and we look at the show fabric path, path switch ID, our local switch ID is 51. Okay, this means that we would take the original Ethernet header that has a source address of the 0011. It has a destination address of the 8075. We then put it inside of Fabric Path. We would say the outer source address is going to be switch ID 51, and the outer destination address is going to be switch ID 52. We then forward the frame based on the fabric path routing table. So if we show fabric path route, it says to reach switch number 52, we're going to go out Ethernet 1 slash 5. We forward it towards this destination. They're then going to look at the outer destination address 52 and continue to forward the frame down towards the exit leaf. But the key point here is that this is unicast traffic. So based on the unicast source, unicast destination MAC address, we know where the frame's coming from, we know where it's going to. Okay, the issue then would be if a broadcast comes in from classical Ethernet, like an ARP, how do we map that to the physical links in the topology? Because what we would want to avoid is a case that server 1 connected to 5K1 uh, sends an ARP into the FabricPath network. We encapsulate this as the Ethernet frame inside the FabricPath tunnel, and we send it up to 7K1, we send it over to 7K2. 7K1 then sends it over to 5K2. 5K2 sends it back to 7K2. 7K2 sends it down to 5K1, and so on and so forth. So you could run into a case where you're infinitely looping the ARP traffic until the time to live expires. It's technically going to work. It's not going to be an infinite loop. Eventually, the frame is going to get dropped. But there's going to be a lot of inefficiencies in the data plane if we let just the time to live be the ultimate loop prevention mechanism for the bum traffic. Okay, so instead, the way that they did it was to elect a root switch with similar logic to what you would see in regular spanning tray. Okay, so multi-destination root is going to be based on a priority value, based on the system ID, and then based on the switch identifier. Okay, and they're going to be choosing the higher values as opposed to the lower values, like in the case of uh, spanning tray. Now, the system ID, we cannot change because that's the MAC address. The switch ID you can change, okay, as we saw in Global Config uh, Fabric Path Switch Identifier. And then the root priority can be modified under the global ISIS process. 
and there's going to be a separate election per multi-topology.